everyone, welcome back to Pommy and Oz. I hope you're all doing well. We're out of lockdown. How good's that? Cheers, Andrews, mate. You ledge. If you are new around here, please drop a like, please drop a subscribe. It means the world to me. We're really close to 700. We're nearly there to 1,000. It's been a long struggle, and I appreciate you coming on board and joining the journey. But please give it a like, give it a share, and please hit that red notification button. And what we're doing today is the AFLW Round 4 Preview. We smashed last week out of the park and we got 6 out of 7. So this week, let's see if we can get a full house. It would be awesome. So currently at the moment, we are 18 out of 22 tips right. Which is near bad for a pom, is it? Foreigner to the game. I'm happy with that. So let's see if we can get the elusive... 100%. And we start off Friday night at 7.10 at Morabin. St. Kilda play Geelong. Now, the Saints have been a real surprise packet this year. They've really come into their own, playing some really expansive football. And we're probably just mismatched with experience last week against the Carlton girls, when the Carlton girls managed to get on top of them and use a, probably a better tactical plan in the horrendous win there. This, though, they are against Geelong. Now, Geelong, on the other hand, they're the opposite end of the scale. Struggling to get any wins. It's quite, quite disjointed in a minute. And it was a real hard 15-point loss last time out against the Doggies. Now, the problem with the Cats is their inability to score goals. Nine out of the 12 quarters this year have been scoreless. The Saints, on the other hand, have the same inability. They have struggled, even though they have good inside 50 numbers, to maintain scoreboard pressure. However, Georgia Patriarchos, when she's in this game, she's a superstar. You've got, you've got the G train as well for St. Kilda. I think that's going to be way too much for the Geelong Cat girls. And I think the Saints will win this one by an easy 10 points or more. Next up, one of the biggest rivalries in our great game. Carlton Football Club play Richmond Tigers. And that's at Icon Park on Saturday at 3.10. What a stupid time to have such a high-profile game. How is that not the Friday game? However... Richmond's hopes in the female department isn't as good as the male department at the moment, but it is slowly coming together. Carlton girls finally cruised to a victory last week. They won by 24 points, as we've discussed against St Kilda, and they look good. It wasn't the most classic of performances. However, it was a performance that would make the competition look up and take notice because they got the job done, and it was conviction, really, to say the least. They did run the game out well. Tactically, they made the switches, which I have been critical of all year from the Carlton girls. Tactically, they were spot on. Their backline looks formidable as well now that you've got an almost full-strength Carlton side. The girls, on the other hand, obviously Monique Conte has been absolutely killing it. And Richmond are still winless. It is slowly coming together. However, I think this is a job too much because we saw last week they can hold it in patches, but can they hold it? in sustained times and Collingwood just really out pressured them and eventually it was kind of cruisy even though it was a tight game. I suspect that the Carlton girls will put on another performance. They've got a lot of ground to make up on the rest of the competition. This will be a Carlton win by 15 or more. Then again 5-10 on the Saturday at the Fremantle Oval we have Fremantle and they're entertaining the Gold Coast Suns. Now Fremantle made it what 10 straight wins last week and they absolutely peppered the Crows at Norwood Oval and it was a masterclass of forward pressure, of defensive pressure around the ground. Houghton, Duffy, you name it, they've got a hell of a side and they keep on getting better. Now the Fremantle girls, some people have questioned has it been a tough draw? Probably not. However, you can only beat what's in front of you. That old adage, we love a cliche here. And I think that this really is a danger game for the Gold Coast Suns. They really do invite pressure. They do bring it on and they do play an expansive game plan. A lot of inexperience in that midfield for Gold Coast Suns. And players like Bowers are going to have a field day against that. I really think this is going to be bad news for the Gold Coast Suns. And I want to tip them because I've got a soft spot for them. However, I think this is going to be... Probably 30 points, I'm going to say. Fremantle win. Saturday evening then, North Melbourne versus Collingwood. 7-10, Marvel Stadium. What an absolute spectacle to have on the Marvel. And it's our first weekend back out of our snap lockdown. And it should be an absolute exciting tie. Now, obviously last week I tipped against North against Melbourne. I thought Melbourne just had something to get going. However, North are going to be very dangerous this week, I think coming off the back of that many people thought it was a surprise loss. Collingwood, Davey was dominant against 
Richmond and really put them across. And that is where Collingwood's specialty is. A bit like Melbourne, they can make it ugly and make it rugged. However, in this case, I think that that second half from North Melbourne won't happen again. They allowed Melbourne back into it, allowed them to control the footy. I think they'll have learned from that. And I think a loss this early in the season, even though it's almost the halfway point, won't affect them. I think the North Melbourne girls just have got too much talent and I think it's come at the wrong time for Collingwood. I know they're undefeated, but I think North Melbourne will get the job done here by 10 points. This is an absolute belter up next. Sunday afternoon then, 1.10 at Hickey Park. We have Brisbane and they entertain the Crows. Now, Brisbane have impressed me. Their goal percentage, 502.9. Absolutely ridiculous. They're scoring goals for fun. That forward line is deadly. And Adelaide, obviously last week, it was a little bit... It was a little bit weak, wasn't it? It wasn't their usual. They really came unstuck by Fremantle's game plan. However, Brisbane don't operate that high intensity. They play a real free-flowing football, more kind of akin to a Richmond now of trying to get it away from the contest and play quick. And I think that plays into Adelaide's hands. Now, there's been a lot of talk, and I know that I said it last week, that people won't fear Adelaide. I think that you've seen how to do it, but the problem is, is knowing how to do it and applying it are two different ingredients in professional sport. And I think, although Brisbane are dangerous, I would back Adelaide Crows to come back. Now, they are away from home. It is madness. You are going into Brisbane, but I am actually going to tip the Crows here. A lot has been talked about as well in the media I've seen is Phillips being found out, rowdy, rowdy, rah. However, I don't believe that. I think the likes of Allen and Phillips are really going to step up this week. You've got Marinhoff there, who is an absolute superstar. And I think that they will just get the job done. I'm going to predict this one, 1-10, one to 10, Adelaide Crows. 3-10 on the Sunday, we're at the Witten Oval. We have the Doggies, and they entertain the Demons. Now, the Melbourne Demons were fascinating last week. Paxman putting on a masterclass. Mithen, Pierce and Gay were brilliant, and that runoff halfback is really deadly. Their ability to transition the football from defence into attack sets is absolutely phenomenal, and it is a very dangerous prospect for any side to play. Melbourne have really impressed me this year, and they will continue to impress me. However, I think that they've got a real good game on their hands here against the Western Bulldogs. I think Blackburn, for me, has been one of the most improved players in the comp. Real surprise packet and really going from strength to strength. And I think the Doggies have got key areas around the ground that can hurt Melbourne. I think their forward pressure is absolutely exemplary. And I think that that will be quite interesting. You ain't going to see the run out and the easy kicks that Melbourne did feast upon, particularly in the fourth quarter against North. That being said, Melbourne are a very accomplished outfit. Although they've started to create a micro-rebuild, they have experience around the ground in the most important places. However, against my better judgment, I'm going to bat the doggies here to surprise and a real coming of age. Should be a great game though, but I just got a feeling the doggies will snip this one. And finally, we end Sunday at Blacktown again. 5-10 GWS Giants. They entertain a hapless West Coast Eagles. Now, the Eagles, they're in all sorts of trouble at the moment. It, it's there, but I don't think they can score enough goals. And I don't think they're potent enough inside 50. And I think it's too readable. And GWS, on the other hand, they are very good when it's sluggish, like they proved last week in horrendous conditions. They're just too good, in my opinion. I think that the Giants here should have enough. Their midfield is really precise. There's a lot of entry points as well. They can really attack inside 50 from anywhere. They've got a lot of players as well who can get their hands on the ball and really take the energy out of the Eagles. You can see the inexperience in the Eagles' side. And I don't think there's enough players there to really compete with it. I don't think it'll be a classic though, but I think GWS will win this one by 10 or more. They're my tips then for this week. I've taken a few puns here. You know, I don't like doing it the easy way. Let me know who you're thinking. I'll see you for the wrap-up show. And until then, pop me out.